Good morning. This is B Narish, working as an assistant professor in AC department. And today's topic is uh, bridge directive five. So before going to this bridge directive five, first we will see what is a directive five. Directive five is a circuit. It can be used to convert the AC signal to the pulsating DC signal by using the APN junction diode. Is called as a directive five. So in that it converts the ac signal to pulsating dc means that the pulsating dc signal contains a dc signal along with uh, some ac components is called as the pulsating dc signal here so if you observe the ac signal the ac signal for every instant it reverses the direction here but coming to your dc signal it maintains the a direction either in a positive peak or a negative peak here so that is the reason the dc signal allows in only one direction either positive direction or a negative direction here. so most of the electronic devices are requires the dc signal hence we need to convert this the given ac signal to your a pulsating dc signal by using this uh, rectified circuit here so there are the different types of the rectifiers here so in the the first one is a off wave rectifier second one is a full wave rectifier another one is a bridge rectifier so in this today we are going to cover a bridge rectifier the construction and the analysis and identify the important parameters of uh, this bridge rectifier here so before going to this in a if you observe the full wave rectifier the full wave rectifier uses the center tap transformer and it uses the two pn junction diodes to process the ac signal to the pulsating dc signal by using the full wave rectifier circuit so in a full wave rectifier we observe that it allows the both the peaks positive peak as well as a negative peak in a one direction either in a positive direction or a negative direction based on the utilization of the diode but in the full wave rectifier if you observe the ripple factor or a efficiency compared with off wave rectifier it improves the ripple factor as well as the efficiency with respect to the off wave rectifier but the major drawback in a full wave rectifier is it uses the center tap of transformer here so coming to the cost parameter the center tap transformer has the highest cost compared to the normal step down transformer here to reduce this cost parameter as well as the utilization factor of uh, a center tap transformer then we go and we are going to replace a center tap transformer with uh, a step down transformer then in the in the place of two pn junction diodes compared with the full wave rectifier in a bridge rectifier we are going to use four pn junction diodes to form the bridge so that is the reason the type of circuit is called as the bridge rectifier here. so here the bridge rectifier to if we want to construct the bridge rectifier we are going to use the four diodes by using this four diodes to form the bridge then we need to apply the ac input voltage with respect to the opposite directions of your bridge circuit then we need to process the ac signal into pulsating dc signal and so for this analysis to or to process the pulsating dc signal from the ac signal voltage in a bridge at one two ends to be connected to the ac source in another two ends we are going to place the load resistance so across the load resistance we are going to observe the the response of the bridge rectifier here 
So if you form the bridge like, so let us say it looks like a bridge cell cured here. And let us take the diagonally we are going to apply the here a AC signal and other two ends we are going to place the load resistance here. So like this by using the four diodes we are going to form the bridge rectifier circuit to process the, the AC signal to the pulsating DC signal here by using the step down transformer here. So then if you observe this bridge rectifier this bridge rectifier is also allows the both the peaks. Why? Because of that, in a given AC signal, we are having two types of the peaks. One is uh, represented as positive P, another one is uh, represented as negative P. If you observe the half wave rectifier, in a half wave rectifier, it use it allows the only the either positive peak or a negative peak. In a full wave rectifier, it allows both the peaks, that is positive peak as well as your negative peak. Similarly, in a bridge rectifier also, it allows the both the peaks of a given input signal, that is positive peak as well as your negative peak. So then, so if you want to suppose uh, to reduce the a pulse, uh, AC signals or a harmonics from a pulsating DC signal, we need to use the a filter concept. So by using this filter concept, we need to remove the AC components then to reduce the only the DC output voltage here. But why because of that most of the electronic devices are requires the only the DC components here. But from this rectifiers concept, the response of the rectifiers is the pulsating DC signal means it contains a DC output voltage along with the AC harmonics. To process any electronic device, we need to convert this pulsating DC signal to the DC signal, Q DC signal. Hence, we are going to approach the a filter concept. So by using this filter concept, then we are reducing the AC harmonics and to produce only the Q DC output. E. Now let us consider this is a circuit diagram for a bridge rectifier circuit. So here this is a center tap, center down, step down transformer here. So it is called as a step down transformer. Then it contains two uh, windings, primary, this is called as a primary winding and here it is the secondary winding. For the primary winding side, we are going to apply the AC source and this is your AC source. And across the secondary winding, then it is passing to the a bridge rectifier circuit. So here, by using these four diodes, we are going to form the bridge here. So hence D1 and D2, D3 and a D4. So your D1 and D2 is a diagonal as well as a D3 and a D4 is a diagonal here. So based on the principle of uh, construction of the bridge rectifier circuit, so one, two ends to be passing through the AC signal and other two ends we are going to place the low resistance. So that is the reason. So we can place here from this node to this node. In between these two nodes, I am going to place the load resistance, hence it should be connected to the load resistance and this other end should be connected to this node, this should node should be connected to your ground or otherwise like draw like this here. This another end of the load resistance should be connected to ground and this node is also connected to ground or otherwise directly you can draw like this. So this is becomes your RL. So both are same meaning here. So one two ends to be passing through the AC signal and other two ends to be connected for load resistance to absorb the response of the bridge rectified circuit. So we can connect uh, either this way or you can connect like this way here. Both are same representation here. Then in this case, now we need to analyze the, what is the, how it is processed the the AC signal to the pulsating DC signal. 
So how it allows the both the peaks, that is positive peak as well as the negative peak. Key. And before going to that, first we need to identify the equivalent models of uh, diodes here. Means, what is the behavior of the diode with respect to the uh, biasing condition here? So we know that for a PN junction diode, there are the two types of the biasing concepts. One is the forward bias concept, another one is the reverse bias concept here. So whenever the PN junction diode is operated under the forward bias means the anode of uh, PN junction is connected to positive pole of the battery and the cathode of PN junction diode is connected to negative pole of the battery then we can say that diode is under forward bias here. So when the diode is under forward bias we know that the equivalent model means the diode is replaced with the short circuit here. So when the diode is enters into forward bias, so what happens in the forward bias here? It offers a very large current with respect to your applied biasing energy voltage means. So at this stage, the diode is a replaced with a short circuit model means the diode is replaced with a short circuit. So this is the equivalent circuit for diode under the forward bias. Similarly, if the diode is operated under reverse bias mode means the anode of the PN junction diode is connected to negative pole of the battery and the cathode of the PN junction diode is connected to positive pole of the battery. Then we can say that the diode is under reverse bias here. If the diode is under reverse bias, it does not offer the flow of any current in a PN junction diode. So, in from that point of view, we can say that the diode is acts as a open circuit model. Here. So, in this model, the diode is replaced with the open circuit model, means the diode is replaced by open circuit. E. By using these two principles, now we are going to analyze the operation of the bridge rectifier with respect to the applied input voltage. E. So, to analyze this bridge rectifier analysis, first we need to pass the input signal. The input signal contains both the peaks. One is 0 to pi duration, it contains a positive off cycle. And this pi to 2 pi duration, this input signal is represented as a negative off cycle with respect to some magnitude is uh, Vm. But here this magnitude is represented as plus Vm. And here this magnitude is represented as minus V. From this graphical representation, the input voltage for this given input signal is represented by Vi equal to. So this is a sinusoidal representation means, so the Vm magnitude is linearly changes with respect to your time period. So hence, Vi is represented as Vm sine omega t here. The total duration is 0 to 2 pi duration. So hence the duration is represented as 0 to 2 pi. But in the 0 to pi the peak is represented as positive magnitude. But pi to 2 pi duration it is represented as negative magnitude. Now this type of the input signal, now we are going to pass in through the step down transformer along with the bridge, bridge circuit here. So now we need to analyze how it is really converts the given AC signal to the a pulsating DC signal and how it allows the both the peaks in a one direction here. So for this case, let us consider the same circuit. And here I'm going to analyze with respect to positive off cycle ends. So here I'm going to pass this signal. So now we'll see what happens during this positive peak signal here. So means, so when you're applying this positive signal and this signal should be connected with respect to these two ends. So here, 
So with respect to this point means this is becomes a positive. With respect to negative point means this becomes your negative here. So from this polarity representation, so here this is a positive polarity is passing through this D1 and D3. And a negative polarity is passing through D2 as well as the D4. But the positive polarity is passing through D1 of D1 of anode and D3 of cathode. If you observe this polarity representation, this positive polarity of the ore signal is passing through D1 of anode, this is anode, as well as D3 of cathode. Similarly, the negative polarity is passing through D4 of anode and D2 of uh, cathode. So here, if you observe this one, the negative polarity. This negative polarity is passing through anode of D4 as well as the cathode of your D. And this is the meeting point. This is also junction. In opposite two ends, we place the load resistance. And across this load resistance, now we are going to analyze the response of your bridge rectified circuit. And with respect to this approaching of uh, this energy to the PN junction diodes. Now, first we need to identify the how it looks like. Means that particular diode, based on your applied voltage, either it may act as a short circuit model or a open circuit model. If you observe this D1, so what happens here? Here D1 is a represented with respect to this polarity along with this anode representation, here D1 is a represented as on, hence it is a represented as a short circuit. Similarly, so here this positive polarity is connected to cathode means, so whenever the positive polarity is connected to cathode, it becomes a reverse bias with respect to it. So hence D3 here it is acts as a reverse bias, hence it is a represented as open circuit. Similarly, at the bottom end, if you observe this bottom end, the negative sign is passing through or negative energy is passing through anode of D4 as well as cathode of D2. So means whenever the negative energy is connected to anode of D4 means this D4 is axial means it acts as your off state means there is a reverse bias and it is represented as open set. Similarly, here the negative energy is a passing through cathode of D2 with respect to this potential. This node is a ground, ground is nothing but a zero. Zero and this is a negative energy. Ideally, zero is a positive ends with respect to this cathode. That is the reason this D2 is acts as a forward bias. Hence, it is a represented as your shots. So from all these observations, with respect to your applied during the positive of cycle. So during the positive off cycle, so what happens here? The D1 and D2 are acts as a forward bias mode, hence it is a replaced with a short circuit model. And during this positive off cycle, D3 and D4 is acts as a reverse bias, hence it is a replaced with a open circuit here, where SC means short circuit, OC means your open circuit. So, according to this equivalent models, based on the approaching of your given input signal, now we need to analyze the flow of current across the load resistance. Now, how this current is flowing? The current is flowing through this short circuited diodes, means through the D1 towards the load resistance, as well as here the current flowing through D2 towards the ground potential, means the same direction here. So if you observe this one, I'll show you the how is the current flow direction here. And you remember this, uh, which diodes are uh, acts as your on and which diodes are replaced with the uh, off state or open. So for this case, so here I represented this, the diode D1 and D2 is uh, acts as a forward bias, hence I replace it with a short circuit. Similarly, the diode D3 and D4, 
is a reverse bias and it is a replacer with the open circuit here. So from these two representations, from the model representations, now we are going to analyze the, the flow of current from this bridge rectifier circuit. So means the current flowing from this node to this node to through the D1 node and again towards the load resistance, similarly towards the ground potential and similarly, so here yeah, this is current flow direction and towards it means so this ground, this node ground is a common node, hence from the short circuit path, the current flowing through the load resistance here. So with respect to that, here I observe that the response across the load resistance is represented as the same peak here. So why because of that, if you made this uh, a constant, resistance is a constant, so means the voltage drop across this resistance is a linearly changes. Means if the input is a linearly changes, output is also linearly changes. So this type of the response is occurred with respect to the positive up cycle here. Now we'll see what happens during the negative up cycle here. Hence, again, I consider the same bridge rectifier circuit. Now here I'm going to apply a negative up cycle here. So means I'm going to apply this pi to 2 pi duration. And we are going to pass the negative up cycle through this bridge rectifier circuit ends. So here, which polarity this is negative peak means it becomes first negative polarity with respect to another end means it becomes a positive. So whenever the negative signal here, this negative signal is connected to D1 of anode as well as the D3 of cathode. And similarly, this positive voltage is passing through D4 of anode and D2 of cathode. So this is anode and a cathode. Here this is anode and a cathode. Similarly, this is anode and cathode. And this is anode and a cathode. So of a PN junction C. So when we are passing the negative op cycle, with respect to that negative op cycle, a negative force or a negative energy is passing through anode of D1 and cathode of D3. Similarly, the positive energy or positive force is passing through anode of D4 and cathode of D2. Based on this approaching of external voltage, now we need to identify which diodes are acts as a forward bias diodes and which diodes are acts as a reverse bias of diode. From that, we need to model the equivalent circuit. So, how we when we need to draw the short circuit and when we need to use the open circuit model here. So, based on the principle of the PN junction diode, we know that when a particular PN junction diode is acts under the forward bias, we can say that that particular diode is a replacer with the short circuit. If suppose if the PN particular PN junction diode is acts under the reverse bias, at particular mode, the diode is a replacer with the open circuit. And based on this approaching of this voltage sources, from this we can observe the which diodes are forward bias and which diodes are reverse bias. From this representation, we know that the D1, so the, for the D1, anode is connected to negative energy, hence the D1 as well as, and similarly, if you observe the D2 diagonally, the D2 of cathode is connected to positive energy, so hence D1 and the D2 are acts as a reverse bias, hence we can replace with the open circuit here. So if the particular diode is a reverse bias, then we need to draw the equal model as open circuit here. Similarly, if you observe the D3 diodes and the D4 diodes, for this D3 and this node is a zero voltage, for a D3 of anode is a zero volts, 
the d3 of cathode is connected to negative energy hence d3 is acts as a power of bias similarly if you observe this d4 the d4 of anode the d4 of anode is connected to positive pole with respect to this node so hence d3 and d4 both these diodes are enters into the forward bias mode if with the forward bias operation then we can replace with a short circuit here. so from these two analysis during the negative off cycle so what we observed your diode d1 and d2 reacts as the reverse bias hence it is a replaced with the open circuit so in all the cases i consider your ideal case here similarly based on this approaching of voltages here so what happens here diode d3 and d4 both these diodes d3 and d4 are acts under the forward bias hence d3 and d4 is a replaced with a short circuit model under the ideal case now what is the current flow direction across the load resistance so always the current flowing through the short circuited path here so which is the short circuit path from this observation so here the d3 as well as the d4 acts as a short circuit path hence the current flowing through d4 towards the load resistance and towards the ground potential here. so hence this is the current flow direction it starts from this node through the d4 so why because of that d4 is on diode here so that should be replaced with a short circuit then current flowing through this load resistance then towards the ground potential similarly here also so what is the representation here the current is flowing from so here like this so toward this one and towards ground potential here so if you observe this response so if you observe this response so what happens here the current flowing through the d4 and from this d3 towards the ground potential and again the current flowing from this node to towards the d4 towards the load resistance and the flow of current during the positive off cycle as well as during the negative off cycle across the load resistance is same direction if you observe the positive off cycle the current flowing across the load direction is same direction and during the negative off cycle also the current flowing across this load resistance is same direction so that is the reason so during the negative off cycle also it crosses the negative p then it converts into the dc signal pulsating dc signal but why here uh, we drawn like in a same direction means during the positive off cycle as well as the during the negative off cycle the current flowing across the load resistance direction is the same hence the flow of response across this load resistance is also represented as a same direction here so that is the reason we observed from the positive peak and a negative peak of cycles the bridge rectifier is also allows uh, both the peaks so the given both the ac signal peaks are converted into a pulsating dc voltage signal here. so this is the analysis of our working of bridge rectifier by by using the step down transformer as well as the um, four diodes here so then by using this analysis now we are going to analyze the some important parameters here so before going to that now i am going to show that the output voltage here so here this is represented as d1 and d2 and here this is represented as d3 and d4 so during the positive off cycle during the positive off cycle so what happens here d1 and d2 is a forward bias and d3 so here what happens d3 and d4 is acts as a reverse bias here so hence it allows the signal through this d1 and the d2 towards the load resistance 
Similarly, during the negative half cycle, what happens here? D1 and D2 are acts as the reverse bias, and D3 and D4 is acts as the forward bias. Then we are mixing these two positive peak and a negative peak. The total output is represented as this one, like this. So, but if you compare with one, so what happens here? So for every pi duration, the bridge rectifier produces the same oscillation here. But in a given input signal, for every two pi duration, it contains one oscillation. But in a bridge rectifier response, for every pi duration, it produces the one oscillation. So from this, we need to define what is the output voltage of the given bridge rectifier circuit. So it contains a magnitude. The magnitude is represented as Vm, and this magnitude is a linearly changes with respect to given time period. Hence, the output voltage V0 is represented as Vm sine omega t. But the duration is only 0 to pi. Why? Because of the for every pi duration, it reproduces the oscillation. So periodically it produces the oscillation for every pi duration c. So hence the output voltage is represented as Vm sine omega t with a duration of 0 to pi. And similarly, if you want to represent the current component, so according to Ohm's law, V is directly proportional to I into R. So if the R is made constant, V is directly proportional to I. So hence, from that output voltage representation, the current is also linearly changes with respect to your applied input signal. Uh, so hence, if you want to draw the current representation, so this is for input signal, and here this is a represented as output. So, during the positive cycle and during the negative of cycle, it allows the both the peaks and the magnitude is represented as a Vm. But in the case of current representation, this current component with a magnitude is a represented as your I m here. From this representation, if you want to write this output current I0, so what is I0 here? I0 is a represented as I m sine omega t. But the oscillation period is, what is the oscillation period here? This is 0 and this is pi duration. So for every pi duration, it reproduces the oscillation or periodically produces the oscillation zero. So that is the reason. The duration, it is represented as 0 to pi. So by using these three parameters, so input voltage, output voltage and output current, now we are going to identify the some important components parameters of this given bridge rectifier. So there are the some following parameters we need to analyze the bridge uh, rectifier. So DC output current, DC output voltage, RMS current, RMS voltage, ripple factor, efficiency, output frequency, peak inverse voltage, peak factor, form factor and uh, transformer realization factor. First, I am going to identify average or a DC output current. So generally, it is defined as the area of one cycle of the curve is divided by the base. It is defined as the area of the one cycle of the curve is divided by the base. From that, the IDC is represented as from the definition. Mathematically, it is represented as Suppose if you want to calculate the area for any input sign, for any signal, so then we need to apply the integral. So that integral can be used to identify the area. So that is the reason. So it is defined as area of the one cycle. So one cycle means 0 to t with respect to integral. And here we are going to identify the current. So i into d of omega t is a divided with the base. The base is nothing but a total time period is a t. So here, by using this one, now I'm going to substitute from this graphical response here. What is the total base here? The base is for every pi duration, it generates the oscillation output or 
rectifier response here. So that is the reason. The time period it is represented as the base is represented as pi and duration is 0 to pi i into d omega t. What is the i? We assume that i is represented as i m sin omega t 0 to omega t is a pi. So hence i is replaced with i m sin omega t d omega t. So here i m is a magnitude is a constant. I take an outside this i m by pi integral of sin omega t is nothing but the cos omega t. Then the limits are 0 to pi. Just you can apply the limits i m by pi minus cos of in the place of omega t you can substitute the limits here. So cos pi minus cos 0. Now you can simplify this one. So this is i m by pi minus of cos pi is a minus 1 and minus cos 0 is a 1 here. So you can substitute your minus 1 minus of minus 1. So this is what happens your minus 2 and minus minus is a get cancel here. So then it becomes i m by pi into 2. So then you can write to i m by pi. This is in terms of current here. Suppose if you want to write in terms of voltage here we need to write here. So generally we know that I is uh, the ratio between voltage and uh, resistance here. It is the ratio to the voltage and your resistance. So hence I m is a replaced with the voltage magnitude is a Vm by with respect to your resistance. But in a bridge rectifier it offers the two types of the resistances here. One is a diode forward resistance of your short circuit diodes here along with a load resistance. So hence I represented with RF plus RF. But here uh, we have the two, two diode forward resistances here. You can also if you want to consider the two diode resistances two RF plus RL like that you can consider. Then the next parameter is average or a DC output voltage. So generally the VDC is represented as in general, V is represented as I into R. So here we are going to calculate or we are going to analyze the DC output voltage or average DC output voltage. So hence it is represented as IDC is multiplied with the load resistance. Now we observe this IDC value. What is IDC value? 2 Vm by pi into RF plus RL into R. Then for this case, if you are considered in most of the cases and uh, diode resistance means diode forward resistance is very very small compared with uh, the given load resistance under this assumption what we are making here this can be reduced by 2 vm by pi into rf is replaced with a 0 plus rl into rl so hence what I mean 2 vm by this is pi into RL into your RL. This RL RL is a get cancelled then 2 Vm by pi. If RF is much much less than of RL. So that is the reason. If RF is much much less than RL, we neglected the diode forward resistances. Hence the approximate average of DC output voltage is represented as 2 times of Vm by pi. Then if you want to calculate RMS current here, so this IRMS is represented as the square root of the same I, IRMS current 1 by T integral of 0 to T I square into D omega T. Now 0 to T means the duration is base is a pi and the duration is 0 to pi. Then we know that I is represented as I m sin omega T. Substitute all these parameters. Now IRMS becomes 1 by pi integral of just apply the limits t where, where t indicate the pi the limits are 0 to pi i means i m sin omega t square along with the d omega t then you can simplify this one apply the integral formula then after the simplification then we observe this uh, IRMS value so what is the IRMS value? Just apply the integration, apply the limits here, 
So then the, we got this i square m by 2 square root here. So means what happens this root and this cancel means i m by root 2 e. So from this the RMS current is represented as i m by root. If you want to write in, in terms of voltage magnitude, i m is a replaced with uh, in terms of voltage and resistance. Hence, i m is a replaced by where i m is a replaced by v m by r f plus r i e. So hence, I substitute this i m value v m by this root two is a root two. The product of the diode forward resistance along with the load resistance c. So this is the RMS current of bridge rectifier circuit. Then similarly, if you want to observe the RMS voltage, VRMS is represented as the product of IRMS and the load resistance. So just now we observe the IRMS value. IRMS is Vm by root 2 into RF plus RL. So this is the IRMS value. Then it is a product with the RL. Then if you want to further simplify this one, then we made this condition. If you made this condition, RF is much much less than of RL. Then what happens here? We neglected this RL. It means VRMS is equal to VM by root 2 times 0 plus RL into RL. So this RL, RL is a get cancelled. Then it becomes VM by root 2 here. So under this condition, the VRMS means RMS voltage or AC voltage is represented as 1 by root 2 times of your VM here. This is RMS. Then the most important is the ripple factor. So what is the ripple factor here? We need to identify the how many AC components or how many AC harmonics will be occur in a rectified output by using this bridge rectified circuit. So by using this ripple factor, we identify that how many ripples will be presented on a pulsating DC output voltage. For this case, it is defined as the RMS value of AC component to the DC component output is known as the ripple factor here. From the definition, it is represented as the mathematical leap. It is a ratio of RMS value of AC component to the DC component here. From that, it is represented as IR RMS by IS. So, where we know that the IR RMS means represented as the square root of I square RMS minus I square DC. Now, simplify these terms, then can, this term is divided with the I square DC value. So, hence, IRMS by IDC whole square minus I square DC by I square DC, then becomes your one here. Now, you can substitute this IRMS value, IDC value. Then we will absorb the ripple factor of the bridge rectifier here. So, when we know that IRMS is IM by root 2 and IDC value is 2 IM by 5, then substitute this IRMS value, IDC value, then simplify this one, it becomes 5 by 2 root 2 whole square minus 1. Substitute this pi value, then simplify this one, then we got this uh, ripple factor of bridge rectifier is 0 0.482 here. Now another parameter, most important parameter is the efficiency. So it, by using this efficiency, we need to identify that how much response we absorb the from a given input signal here. So for this case, it defined as it is a ratio of DC output power to the AC input power. Why I'm defining like this mean? For a, any rectifier circuit, we are applying the AC input signal. Then the given rectifier, it processes this AC signal to the pulsating DC signal. So that is the reason. The efficiency that is defined as it is a ratio of DC output power to the AC input power. So from that, the output power in terms of DC power and your input power is AC power. So PD is where PDC means P sub is DC means DC output power. PAC means AC input power. And if you want to write in terms of uh, current magnitude, the PDC value, I square DC into RL. 
Similarly, PAC means I square AC into RL. So we got this IDC value and the IAC values here. Just substitute these values, then simplify this here. Substitute the PDC value and the PAC value. Then so we got this efficiency is 8 RL by pi square into RF plus RL into 100. And from this, if you made this RF is again much much less than of RL. So what happens? We consider this RF is a zero. This RL, RL is a get cancelled. Then it becomes 8 by pi square into 100 here. So that value is equal to 81.2 percent here. So the efficiency of this bridge rectifier is 81.2 percent here. So up to this point, today we analyze the the construction of the bridge rectifier and the working principle of the bridge rectifier and some of the important parameters are related to bridge rectifier. Here. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.